the next two weeks, we're going to talk about factoring. So I'm going to start today's lesson by introducing factoring. So I'm going to start by talking about what factoring is. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the greatest common factor. And then I'm going to do some examples of factoring the greatest common factor out of polynomials. So what is factoring? Let's start by remembering what a factor is. When an integer is written as the product of two or more integers, each of these integers is called a factor of the product. Likewise, when a polynomial is written as the product of two or more polynomials, each of these polynomials is called a factor of the product. In the equation 3 times 5 equals 15, the 3 and 5 are factors of the product 15. In the equation x cubed times x to the fifth equals x to the eighth, x cubed and x to the fifth are factors of the product x to the eighth. Of course, we can also think of x to the eighth as a product of eight factors of x. In the equation x plus 3 times x plus 5 equals x squared plus 8x plus 15, the binomials x plus 3 and x plus 5 are factors of the trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 15. The process of writing a polynomial as a product is called factoring. Factoring can be thought of as applying the distributive property in reverse. So we can think of factoring as the reverse process of multiplying. Now let's talk about the greatest common factor. The first step in factoring a polynomial is to see whether all of the terms of the polynomial have a common factor. We want to find and factor out the greatest common factor. So let's talk about finding the greatest common factor. Let's start by determining how we're going to find the greatest common factor of several integers. Well, our first step is to write each number as a product of prime factors. Remember that prime numbers are natural numbers whose only factors are 1 and the number itself. The natural numbers are just the positive counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Second, we're going to identify the common prime factors. Any prime factor that appears in all of the numbers also appears in the greatest common factor. The exponent on the prime factor is the smallest number of times the prime factor occurs in any of the numbers. If there are no common prime factors, then the greatest common factor is 1. So let's do some examples. Find the greatest common factor of each list of integers. Well, first we have 21 and 33. 21 can be written as 3 times 7. 3 and 7 are both prime numbers. 33 can be written as 3 times 11. 3 and 11 are both prime numbers. Looking to see if there are any common prime factors to both of these numbers, I see that each has a factor of 3. So 3 is the greatest positive number that divides evenly into 21 and 33. We can say the greatest common factor, and we often abbreviate greatest common factor with GCF of 21 and 33 is 3. What about 40 and 48? Well, 40 is 2 times 20, but 20 is 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. So we can write 40 as 2 cubed times 5. What about 48? Well, 48 is 2 times 24, but 24 is 2 times 12. And 12 is 2 times 6. And finally, 6 is 2 times 3. So we can write 48 as 2 to the 4th times 3. Well, let's look for common prime factors. I've got 2 cubed times 5, and I have 2 to the 4th times 3. Looks like the only prime number that 40 and 48 have in common is 2. Now I need to determine what's the smallest exponent on 2. Well, in 40 here, I have 2 cubed. 3 is a smaller exponent than 4. So it looks like the greatest common factor of 40 and 48 is 2 cubed, which is 8. So I can write that the GCF, the greatest common factor of 40 and 48, 
is 2 cubed, which we can just write as 8. Here are some more numbers, 15 and 34. Well, how can I write 15 as a product of prime factors? 15 is 3 times 5. Both of those numbers are prime. What about 34? 34 is even. 34 is 2 times 17. 17 is also a prime number. So now I need to look for common prime factors. Here I have 3 and fi 5, mix 15. Here I have 2 and 17. Their product is 34. I don't have any prime factors in common. So in this case, the greatest common factor of 15 and 34 is just 1. So I write the greatest common factor, GCF, of 15 and 34 is 1. What about 12, 24, and 60? Well, let's start with 12. 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. What about 24? 24 is 2 times 12, so that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And what about 60? 60 is, let's see, 2 times 30. 30 is 2 times 15. And 15 is 3 times 5. So now I need to look for common prime factors. Let's see, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Both of those have two 2's and a 3. What about 60? 60 also has two 2's and a 3. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. Well, let's look at these numbers I started with. 12 and 24, those are multiples of 12. 60, that's a multiple of 12 also. I might have observed that ahead of time and saved myself some steps. A lot of times when I'm finding the greatest common um, factor of a list of integers, all that I do is look at the numbers and see if I can figure it out in my head, and I don't always have to go through this long process. So in this case, through the long process, I have discovered that the greatest common factor of 12, 24, and 60 is 12. What if we have variables? Let's find the greatest common factor of x squared, x cubed, and x to the fifth. Well, the greatest common factor of several expressions of the form x to the n is x raised to the smallest exponent that occurs in any of the expressions, similar to what we are looking at with um, prime factors. We looked for the smallest exponent on any prime factor. So looking at our expressions, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fifth, Obviously, our smallest exponent is 2, so it should be the case that the greatest common factor of x squared, x cubed, and x to the fifth is x squared. Let's make sure this makes sense. Let's think about how we can write each of these expressions. x squared is x times x, x cubed, x times x times x, x to the fifth has five factors of x. What do all of these factorizations have in common? Well, every one of these has two factors of x. That's where our greatest common factor, x squared, came from. Now let's find the greatest common factor of t to the seventh, t to the twelfth, and t. Again, since these are all just powers of the variable, powers of t in this case, I'm looking for the smallest exponent. I have an exponent of seven, an exponent of twelve, and an implied exponent of one on that t. 1 is definitely smaller than 7 and 12, so t to the first power, which is just t, is going to be our greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of t to the 7th, t to the 12th, and t is just t. Now let's find the greatest common factor of 2x squared, 8x cubed, and 10x. Well, now we have integers as well as powers of x. We looked at how we find the greatest common factor of integers. I think I can do this one in my head. 2, 8, and 10 have a greatest common factor of 2. Then looking at our um, factors of x, we look for the smallest exponent. Well, there's an implied exponent of 1 on the x in the term 10x. 
So our greatest common factor is going to have 2 for the coefficient and x for the variable part. So the greatest common factor of 2x squared, 8x cubed, and 10x is 2x. Now let's find the greatest common factor of a squared b cubed, a to the fifth b squared, and a to the sixth b. Well, remember we said that the greatest common factor of several expressions of the form x to the n is x raised to the smallest exponent that occurs in any of the expressions. What I need to do here is just apply this twice. Look at the factors of a, find the smallest exponent, and then look at the factors of b and find the smallest exponent. So I have an a squared, a to the fifth, and a to the sixth. The smallest exponent is 2, so a squared is going to be part of the greatest common factor. Now let's look at the b's. I have b cubed, b squared, and b. b has an implied exponent of 1, so my smallest exponent is 1. So my greatest common factor should be a squared, b to the first, which is just a squared, b. So the greatest common factor of a squared, b cubed, a to the fifth, b squared, and a to the sixth, b, is a squared, b. What about the greatest common factor of p squared, q to the third, r squared, p to the fifth, q to the fourth, r cubed, and p to the fifth, q squared. Well, now I have three variables to consider. What's the smallest exponent on any of the p's? That's a 2 in the first expression, p squared. What about q's? I have a q to the third, q to the fourth, and q squared. q squared has my smallest exponent of 2. What about the r's? In the first expression, I have r squared. In the second expression, I have r cubed. In the third expression, I don't have an r, so r is not going to be part of the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of p squared q cubed r squared p to the fifth q to the fourth r cubed and p to the fifth q squared is p squared q squared no factors of r. Now I want to talk about factoring the greatest common factor out of polynomials. Let's factor the polynomial 5t plus 15 by factoring out the greatest common factor of the terms. So let's think about how I can factor these terms. 5t 5 is a prime number, so I can just write this as 5 times t. The factors are 5 and t. 15 I can write as 5 times 3. 5 and 3 are both prime numbers. So both of these terms have 5 in common. Remember, we can think of factoring as the distributive property in reverse. So I'm applying the distributive property in reverse here to factor out the 5. If I factor out the 5, well, I need to ask myself, what do I have to multiply 5 by to get back this 5 times t? Well, I'm missing that factor of t. For the second term, I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply this 5 by to get back this 5 times 3? Well, I'm missing this factor of 3. The nice thing about factoring is you can always check your work. All that you need to do is take your factorization and multiply. So in this case, we need to distribute the 5 back through the parentheses. So 5 times the quantity t plus 3, 5 times t is 5t, plus 5 times 3 is 15. 5t plus 15 is the polynomial we started with, so my factorization checks. Now let's factor the polynomial x to the fourth minus x to the seventh by factoring out the greatest common factor of the terms. So I have four factors of x in the first term and seven factors of x in the second term. Remember, when I just have a variable raised to a power, all I'm looking for is the smallest exponent. So the smallest exponent here is x to the fourth. So I should be able to factor out x to the fourth as the greatest common factor. 
Now I need to ask myself, what do I have to multiply x to the fourth by to get this x to the fourth I started with? Well, that's just the multiplicative identity one. Next, I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply x to the fourth by to get this minus x to the seventh? Well, I'd need to multiply by minus x to the third. I'm missing three factors of x. So let's check this and make sure it works. When I multiply x to the fourth by the quantity one minus x to the third, x to the fourth times one is x to the fourth minus x to the fourth times x to the third, that's a total of seven factors of x. That's the polynomial I started with, so this checks. Before leaving this example, though, I want to mention one thing. A common error I see is forgetting this one as the first term in the polynomial inside parentheses. Whenever we factor the greatest common factor out of a polynomial, the polynomial in the parentheses should always have the same number of terms as the polynomial that we started with. So when we distribute our greatest common factor back through the parentheses, we have the same number of terms in that polynomial we started with. In this case, we had to distribute the x to the fourth back, and we never would have got this first term, x to the fourth, if we didn't include our one here. Now let's factor the polynomial 9a to the fifth minus 27a to the fourth. Well, 9 and 27, I can see right away, have a common factor of 9. Looking at my powers of a, well, my smallest exponent is 4. So I'm going to factor out 9a to the fourth as my greatest common factor. So I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply 9a to the fourth by to get 9a to the fifth? Well, I've already got the 9. I'm just missing one of the factors of a. Next, I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply 9a to the fourth by to get negative 27a to the fourth? Well, I've already got my factors of a. What I'm missing is negative 3. Negative 3 times 9 will give me negative 27. Let's go ahead and do this check in our heads. Let's make sure if I distribute this greatest common factor back through the parentheses, I really do get the polynomial that I started with. 9a to the fourth times a is 9a to the fifth. That's good. 9a to the fourth times negative 3 is negative 27a to the fourth. That's good. So my factorization checks. Now let's factor 10p to the fifth minus 25p cubed plus 5p squared. Well, 10, 25, and 5 all have 5 in common, so I know that part of my greatest common factor will be 5 then I need to look at my powers of p. What's the smallest exponent? Well, I have a p to the fifth, a p cubed, and a p squared. So my smallest exponent is 2. So my greatest common factor here should be 5p squared. If I factor out 5p squared, first thing I need to think about is, what do I need to multiply 5p squared by to get 10p to the fifth? Well, that should be 2p cubed. I need three more factors of p. Then, what do I need to multiply 5p squared by to get negative 25p to the third? 5 times negative 5 will give me the negative 25, and I need one more factor of p. So, negative 5p. And then finally, what do I need to multiply 5p squared by to get 5p squared? Well, again, this is where we use the multiplicative identity 1, and it's important that we include this in our factorization. Inside the parentheses, I should have the same number of terms as were in the polynomial I started with. Inside the parentheses, I have 1, 2, 3 terms. The polynomial I started with had 1, 2, 3 terms. So that looks good, but I still do want to go ahead and check to make sure that my factorization actually works. I think I'll check this one in my head also. 5p squared times 2p cubed. That's 10p to the fifth. That looks good. 5p squared times negative 5p. That's negative 25p to the third. That's right. And 5p squared times 1 
Well, of course, that gives us back our 5p squared. So my factorization checks. Now let's factor 10a minus 17ab plus 5b. Well, looking at these terms, I can see that 10a and negative 17ab, those first two terms have an a in common. So I could factor an a out of the first two terms. Looking at the polynomial again, I can see that the second two terms, negative 17ab and 5b, both have a b in common. So I could factor a b out of the second two terms. I don't see anything in common to all three terms, though. Something that's important to remember as you're factoring polynomials is that an expression is never factored if addition or subtraction occur outside grouping symbols of the expression. So where I see parentheses up here, I also see addition outside of the grouping symbols, outside of the parentheses, in both of these expressions. So these would not be examples of factoring this polynomial. If the only factors of a polynomial are 1 and itself, the polynomial is prime. Well, the only common factor I see to all three of the terms in the polynomial is 1. So it must be the case that the polynomial 10a minus 17ab plus 5b is prime. Now let's factor negative 3m minus 6m cubed. Well, 3 and 6 both have 3 in common. So I know I'm going to use 3 in my greatest common factor. And then my powers of m, my lowest exponent, is 1. So m is going to be in my greatest common factor. The other thing I notice about these two terms is that they're both negative. I could actually factor out 3m or negative 3m. A lot of times when you're factoring, it's useful to factor out a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and show what happens if I factor out negative 3m. So when I do that, the first question I want to ask myself is, what do I have to multiply negative 3m by to get this first term, negative 3m? This is a case where we just need to multiply by the multiplicative identity 1. Next, I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply negative 3m by to get negative 6m cubed? Well, that would be positive 2. Positive 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6 and I'm missing two factors of m, so 2m squared. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do this check in my head. Negative 3m times 1 is negative 3m. That gives me the first term back. Negative 3m times 2m squared, that's negative 6m to the third power. That gives my second term back, so my factorization checks. Finally, let's factor 4m to the fifth, n cubed, minus 16m cubed, n to the fourth, plus 8m squared, n to the fifth. What a mouthful. So I'm going to first just copy this down, trying not to make any errors in all of these exponents. And then I'll stop and think about my greatest common factor. Well, for the coefficients, that's pretty easy for me to figure out. 4, 16, and 8 all have 4 in common. So I think my coefficient in my greatest common factor will be 4. Then I need to look at the m's and the n's individually. I have m to the fifth, m cubed, and m squared. So m squared is going to be part of my greatest common factor, lowest exponent of 2. What about the n's? I have n cubed, n to the fourth, and n to the fifth. 3 is the smallest exponent, so n cubed is going to be part of my greatest common factor. So I'm going to factor out 4 m squared n cubed. So now I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply 4 m squared n cubed by to get 4 m to the fifth n cubed? Well, I've already got the 4. I'm missing 3 factors of m, and I have all of my factors of n. So I just need to multiply by m cubed. Moving on to the second term, what do I need to multiply 4m squared n cubed by to get negative 16m cubed n to the fourth? Well, I need negative 4. 4 times negative 4 will give me the negative 16. I need one more factor of m, and I also need one more factor of n. Moving on to the last term. What do I need to multiply 4m squared n cubed by to get 
m squared n to the fifth. Well, positive 2 will give me the 8. 4 times 2 is 8. I already have all of my factors of m. I need two more factors of n, so I need n squared here. And let's do a quick check. 4m squared times n cubed, all multiplied by m cubed, would give me 4m to the fifth n cubed. That's my first term. That checks. 4m squared n cubed times negative 4mn, that would give me negative 16m to the third n to the fourth. That's my second term. That checks. 4m squared n cubed times 2n squared, that gives me 8m squared n to the fifth. That's my last term. That checks. If you want to write out this check on paper, especially when they get kind of messy like this, go ahead. That's a good idea. Some people always like to show their checks on paper. If you need to do that, do that. If you can check in your head like I've done on some of these last examples, that's fine too. I'm going to turn this over to Steve now, who's going to talk about another factoring technique for polynomials.